Hello boys and girls, a very good evening and welcome to this live stream brought to you by Talent Sprint. August 24, 9.15pm and we are here to discuss something very important that can help you score more in your IDP SPU 2017 preliminary examination. But before that, let me update you all that India is in a great position against the cricket match versus Sri Lanka today, right? Well, you all know that Sri Lanka ended up scoring 236 on a loss of 8 after the game of 50 overs. India has started uh, really well and I think we are at 102 for no loss at the end of 15 overs. I am just giving this update to you all so that if at all you have been preparing for your IBPSPO exam since the morning, you should get a breather out of it, right? Now, while I say that, it is important for you all to ensure that you don't get distracted by such stuff in the next 45 or 44 days left for IBPSPO preliminary examination. Remember, like I mentioned in my session yesterday, these 45 days or this time that you have uh, before your IBPSPO preliminary examination is not going to come back, right? So ensure that you give your best possible and you know spend as much time as possible practicing and learning all the concepts relevant that can help you score more in your examination. All right. Now I am here to discuss one such technique uh, that can add value to your preparation and you know improve your chances of selection in the exam, and that is about finding out squares of numbers. Finding out squares of numbers ranging between 75 and 125, right? Or for that matter, between 70 to 130, right? There's a very very useful technique which, if you practice uh, for like say 15 20 minutes. You'll become a pro and find out square of numbers between 70 to 130 in about five seconds. Yeah. Or maybe four, four and a half seconds. Yeah. So I'm sure you're really excited to learn this. Maybe some of you are already aware of this, but let's quickly recap this uh, if, if you know it already. And others who are not aware of it, I'm sure will find it really very useful. So the idea is to find out squares of numbers ranging from 70 to 130. Now there are some underlying assumptions here, right? I think all of you must know and uh, uh, ensure that you uh, follow this tip. That is, you should learn 1 to 30 squares by heart if you are planning to appear for a competitive examination, right? Be it a bank exam or an SSE exam or any competitive examination where you are tested on your aptitude skills, you should know 1 to 30 squares by heart. Right now, all of you know, like one square is one, two squared is four, six squared is 36, nine squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 20 squared is 400, 30 squared is 900. But one to 30 squared by heart is very, very important. If you can do this, then finding out squares of the remaining numbers can be done in about three to four seconds, like I've mentioned. Right. So assuming that all of you know one to 30 squares already, these are like available on your fingertips. Let me explain you this technique which can help you find out squares of numbers which are close to 100. All right. So I'll share my screen now, explain this technique to you and then come back to discuss more about your preparation. So here we go. Okay, uh, just give me a second while I try to pull out a blank screen where I can work and explain you the technique, right? So what we were discussing is how to, or what we are about to discuss is how to find out squares of those numbers which are close to 100. So I think before we move on to writing something there, let me uh, talk a little bit about it. Now, the, the basic uh, formula that we are going to follow here is a plus b or a minus b the whole square. I'm sure all of you know this basic algebraic identity, right? a plus b the whole square is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. a minus b the whole square is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? So to generalize this, a plus or minus b whole squared is a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, right? So this is one thing that you all must know, which I'm sure you are already aware of. And the second thing is 1 to 30 squares. So let's now move on and learn this wonderful technique that can help you find out squares of numbers in about four seconds. Here we go. So what we're going to discuss here is uh, squares of numbers between 70 to 130 right very interesting technique so like i've said a plus or minus b whole squared you all must be aware of this a squared plus or minus 2ab 
plus b square. So we are going to use the same fundamental formula and find out squares very quickly, right, in a jiffy. Now what do we do? Like for example, let's say we have to find out uh, 79 squared. What is 79 squared? 79 squared is equal to what? Well, the regular way of finding out the square is to multiply 79 by itself, right? So 9 9 is 81, 9 7 is 63 plus 8 is, uh, you know, 71, then 7 9 is 63, 6 is carried forward, 7 7 is 49, and 6 is 55. And this finally gives you... Uh, the result as 6241, right? So we can say 79 squared is 6241. While the answer is correct, you know that you cannot be doing this in a competitive exam, right? You don't have enough time to work out on these calculations on paper. So how do you do and get the same answer 6241 in a jiffy? Well, a plus or minus b, the whole square. Now the idea is, if you look at these range of numbers from 70 to 130, we will consider the base as 100, right? The base to be considered is 100, which means the numbers are all close to 100. So the one thing that you all have to remember is always split the given number. See, if I have to use a plus b whole square or a minus b whole square, for 79, you can say that 79 squared is equal to 80 minus 1 the whole square, right? That's one way of doing it. Or maybe 70 plus 9 whole square, right? 70 plus 9 whole square. While these appear to be easy, but the calculation is going to be complex in these cases. The best way to work on 79 square is to consider 100 minus 21 the whole square. That's what I mean when I say the base is 100, right? The base is 100 means you have to consider the base value to be 100, right? So try to find out the difference of the number with respect to 100. How much more or less is the number with respect to 100? So while 79 can be considered as 80 minus 1, the easier way of doing it is to consider it as 100 minus 21, 100 minus 21 whole square. So now let us find out 100 minus 21 whole square using the expansion that we have already discussed. What will it be? A squared, which is 100 squared, minus 2ab, so 2 into 100 into 21, plus b squared, which is 21 squared. Now 100 squared, you all know, is 10,000, right? So this is 10,000. Minus 2ab, now look at this. 2 into 21 is 42, 42 into 100, so 4200, plus 21 square, you should know is 441, right? I had told you already that 1 to 30 squares, you have to learn by heart. So 21 is a part of that, and it is 441. Now simplify this, what happens? 10,000 minus 4200, 10,000 minus 4000 is 6000. Minus 200 is 5,800. 5,800 plus 441 will be 6,241. That's what we had got here earlier. So this is how it works out. 100 minus 21, the whole square. You might be wondering what is so uh, interesting about this technique. It is also going to take a lot of time if you start expanding it on paper, right? Well, what we have done now is paperwork. But if you actually look at it, no paperwork is needed if you just try and uh, do the same thing mentally, right? Well, it looks like there are three steps involved, but actually there's no step involved here. See, the idea is this. Always break the number as 100 plus or minus x. What's the advantage? Look at this. 100 plus or minus x whole square. The base is 100. So if there is any number between 70 to 130, always try to break it as 100 plus x or 100 minus x. Right? If it is less than 100, take it as 100 uh, minus x. If it is more than 100, take it as 100 plus x. Now what happens? It will be 100 squared minus 2 into 100 into x plus x squared. And if you simplify it further, 100 squared is always going to be 10,000. So that can be like, it, it takes 0 seconds, right? You know that the first term is always going to be 10,000, right? Because the base is 100, so 10,000. Look at the second term. Always take double of the value that you have considered here, 2 times of x, and subtract those many 100, 2x into 100. And finally, x squared. So this is the technique, 100 squared, which is 10,000, minus or, or plus or minus and in this case it is like plus or minus so plus or minus plus or minus two times of x into 100 plus x squared so go back and look at this now see 100 minus 21 you know that the first term is 10,000 always now since it is 21 double always double see 2x is always going to be there it is 2x multiplied by 100 it is always 2x multiplied by 100 so 20 x is equal to 21 double 42 subtract 4200 if it is minus 21 minus 4200 if it is plus 21 plus 4200 plus 21 squared as simple as that so the first term is fixed, last third term is anyway going to be the x square, whatever, 21 or 32 or 28 or 14, that square. Second term is what is important. Second term is twice of the value here multiplied by 100. And just do the arithmetic sum of these three terms to get the required answer. Let's take maybe a couple of more examples to, you know, uh, understand this better, right? Like for example, you have to find out 114 square. What do you do? 114 is 100 plus 14. 
Now don't write 100 plus 14 whole square. It is 100 plus 14 whole square, right? So 100 square, 10,000 the first term. What is, see 100 plus 14. What did we take it as? 100 plus 14. Now since it is 14, double it. It becomes 28. So plus 2,800. 28 multiplied by 100 plus 14 squared. What is 14 squared? 196. So 10,000 plus 2,800 is 12,800 plus 196 is 12,996. As simple as that. Now since I'm putting steps on paper and trying to explain this to you, it is taking a little longer. When you do the same thing mentally, it can be done much, much faster. Right? Let's say I have to find out 123 squared. What will it be? 10,000 plus 4,600. Why is it 4,600? Because 23, right? Double 23. It should be taken as 100 plus 23. Double of 23 is 46. 4600 plus 23 square, which is 529. And you're done. So 14,600 plus 529. It will be 15,129. Let's say you have to find out 84 square. 84 is what? 100 minus 16. So 10,000. Since it is minus 16, it becomes minus 3200. Minus 16. Double minus 32. Multiply by 100. Minus 3200. Plus 16 square, 256. So 10,000 minus 3,200 is 6,800. 6,800 plus 256 is 7,056. Right? Let's say you have to find out, uh, you know, uh, 73 squared. 73 is what? 100 minus 27. So 10,000 minus 5,400 plus 27 squared is 729. And you're done. 10,000 minus 5,400 is 4,600 plus 729 is 5,329. Again, I repeat, you don't have to put pen on paper. You know that the first term is always 10,000. The last term is the square of x. And the middle term is plus or minus 2x into 100, depending on plus x or minus x. Now, I'm sure if you practice like some 10 or 15 numbers, ranging between 70 to 130, within 20, 25 minutes, you'll be a pro in finding out squares of these values. All right, so a simple yet very powerful technique. May or may not be really useful in your examination, but just imagine if you have to find out square of a number in that range and you do it on paper, then you're not doing the right thing. You're already out of the race. Remember, the competition is huge. IDPSPO 2017, it is being speculated that there'll be at least 25 lakh applicants. I mean, the competition is so huge. It, in such a cutthroat competition, you cannot waste even a single second of yours putting pen on paper. So it becomes all very important for you to make sure that you learn all such techniques and practice enough that you're able to apply the right thing at the right time, right? The right technique at the right time. So if at all, I come across 70 to 130, any number between 70 to 130 and I have to find out a square, I should not even think of putting pen on paper, right? Because by the time you write the number and try to square it on paper, the other smarter students would have got the answer and move to the next one. And you're already out of the race. So you can leave nothing for chances this technique is definitely very, very useful. And, you know, you can just extrapolate the same technique to find out squares of other numbers. Like what happens beyond 130? 130 to 180, the base value should be 150. 180 to 230, the base value can be taken as 200, right? And accordingly find out what are going to be the, what, what is going to be the step-by-step -step process. Now, I'm sure some of you would know how to find out 96 square in a much better way. Like 96 is 100 minus 4, so 10,000 minus 800, 9,200 plus 16, 9216 is the answer. I have to find out, let's say, 93 square, 100 minus 7, so 10,000 minus 1400 is 8,600, plus 49, 8,649 is the answer. You have to find out 98 square, 100 minus 2, so 10,000 minus 400, 9,600, plus 2 square is 4, so 9,604 is the answer. I am saying it loud, so it's taking time, right? If I have to do it mentally without speaking a word out, I'll save a couple of more seconds. And if I can do this, I'm sure you guys can also do that. There are some other special techniques available, right? I mean, where you put numbers on paper, like 96, so, you know, 100 minus 6 and all that can be done. But in my view, if you can just master this one technique, you'll be able to find out squares very easily. And the same, like I said, can be extrapolated for other numbers as well, right? Other ranges as well. So very, very important for you to learn how to find out squares of numbers. So that's about the technique for the day. I'm sure you're enjoying these live streams brought to you by Talent Spring to help you prepare and get ready for your IBPCPO 2017 examination. I had already mentioned about this uh, new mobile app uh, that we have launched, which can help you with your personal exam strategy based on your performance in the daily quiz that you take. If you have not downloaded the app already, please go to Play Store right now and download the Talent Spring's app for your bank exam preparation. I'm sure this is going to be a great advantage in your preparation for this exam. 
right on that note i would like to close it here uh, wish you all a very happy ganesh chaturthi in advance and i hope that you crack and achieve your dream bank job this year through ibps remember there's no shortcut to success the only shortcut to succeed in these exams is to practice more right so practice practice and more practice i'll see you all again in the next session till then keep practicing and take very good care of yourselves bye